Wintertime in Scotland. The generation has been known for its severe weather conditions. Wind, rain, sleet, snow, sub-zero temperatures. Basically some of the harsh conditions on the planet. However, this year is somewhat different. With its beautiful blue skies, moderate temperatures, reminiscent of the early days of spring. Couple that with a stunning scenery of the Forest Lodge estate. It sets a perfect scene for the Scottish Borders Hill Rally. Now, last year, Anthony Jackson took the win after a tense battle with Justin Birchall and Ben Duckworth. Ben Duckworth, the 2016 champion, is back with a vengeance. He's sorted his electrical gremlins out and him and Matt Cook are a team to be reckoned with. Can they do it again? Let's find out. Andy, over to you. There are several drivers expected to be in contention for the victory this year, including Willie Stubbs, who may not have raced since this event 12 months ago, but was on the podium on that occasion. Can he repeat that this year? Justin Birchley is back, but now at the wheel of a standard tuned Izutsu, how will he fare in a more production based machine? And then there's Mark Jakes in the Freelander that Dan Lofthouse says is one of the quickest cars he's ever built. Veteran Ian Gregg should be one to watch as well, as he hopes his agile Polaris will be able to handle the terrain well. Well, let's head down to the start line where Anthony is with a few more potential front runners. Got another man to look out for here at the uh, Scottish Boys Hill Rally. Um, it's Phil Bayliss in his uh, trusty uh, TD5 Land Rover 90. Hello, Anthony. Good morning, Phil. How are you? Not bad, thank you. Um, about to get stage one of 16 underway. Um, the car's been here, it's performed very well here before. Um, how are you feeling? Um, a bit nervous, to be honest with you. I don't know why. I don't normally get nervous, but yeah, yeah. I don't know if a bit of pressure today, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. As soon as that right foot goes down, there'll be no nerves. I'm sure they'll disappear pretty quick, <laughs> I must admit. Um, good luck, Phil. Uh, we'll catch you a bit later. Um, have fun. We'll have a go. See you, Cheers. Mate. Now, an interesting vehicle is Andy Powell's um, Peugeot 306. Morning, Andy. Morning. How are you doing? Not too bad. Now, the car's uh, got a uh, four-cylinder, two-litre uh, Cosworth engine, uh, 250 brake horsepower. Um, this is a very light vehicle. Um, what's the testing been like? Uh, how have you found it? Uh, yeah, testing has been very good, very pleased. Um, very pleased with Adam from A&R Performance for the rebuild. Um, yeah, the car goes very well. We'll, we'll see this weekend. First proper event. Yeah, is it the first major event it's done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If all goes well, where do you see yourself finishing? Oh, any, anyway, I don't mind if it's last, as long as we finish the event. <laughs> um, um, you've, been, you, you've been quick before, obviously you've had a Simbagini uh, before, powered by an LS3. Uh, very quick, you were very successful with it. Uh, you've got the talent, now you've just got to put it to test. Uh, ooh, yeah, I don't know how much talent I've got. I'll try not to run out of it on this weekend. <laughs> Alright, good luck. Alright, thanks very much. Into the morning stage action, and it was 2016 Scottish Hill Rally winner Ben Duckworth who took the early lead, four seconds quicker than anybody else through stage one. However, by the end of the morning loop, he'd find himself dropping to second and nearly a minute off the lead. Mike Moran was expected to fight for a podium result, and two second place times on the first morning meant that he would do just that, sitting in third place at the first service. Despite posting just the third fastest time on stage one, there were few people willing to count out reigning Scottish Hill Rally champion Anthony Jackson, and with good reason. A sensational run through stage two saw him move into a commanding lead by the end of the morning action. Stage one is uh, done for Cameron Crowe, but um, a puncher, talk us through it. Well, stage was all right, it was quite all right, fun. Go, well, I've got a puncher. Oh, sorry, we've got to go. Gotta but, go. Well, speak later. Yeah, good luck. Sorry, look. thanks. Good. As expected, the order continued to shuffle throughout the morning. Ian Gregg had a solid and consistent run from the first stages, propped up the top five by the first service. The Polaris RZR led its class as well and was clearly well suited to some of the more technical sections of the route. Greg was engaged in a tight battle all morning with William Stubbs. Will finished second here a year ago, his best result at the Hill Rally to date, but found himself sixth after the first three stages, albeit only eight seconds outside of the top five and less than 30 away from the podium places.
Mark Jakes had a steady start to the rally, just seventh in stage one, but moved up to fourth overall by the end of the morning loop. Consistency is key in this event, but Mark was clearly upping the pace with each stage. It also benefited, no doubt, from the jumbled order caused in part by the cancellation of stage two, after only a handful of crews completed it. Here's Anthony with more on that story. That's right, Andy. Uh, Trisha's already started here at uh, Forrester Estate. Johnny Drysdale seeded fifth. He's a very quick driver. Put it in a ditch on stage two. He hit a tree on the way out, so he's brought it back. He's going to miss stage two and three now. Um, but he's got his team working on it. I'm sure they'll get it back together and crack on with the event. Paul, um, didn't go quite to plan, did it? Uh, it must have been a commentator's curse. <laughs> I said on the start line, um, yeah, didn't go quite a plan. We were second car through and the, the roads were very slippery, marbly, and we just happened to slip off the road and um, unfortunately we hit a stump and I think it's compressed my um, navigator's back, so unfortunately Andrew's in hospital. Hope he's all right, it's the main thing. Having had to take a nominal time from the cancelled second stage, many drivers were keen to make up the lost time on stage three. Paul Myers was able to do just that, posting the eighth fastest time and holding on to his Class 9 lead. The suspension on the 5-litre V8 engine tornado was taking a battering over the incredibly rough terrain. Paul soldiered on with relatively little drama. Richard Wynne Williams was matching Paul throughout the early stages and ended the morning just seven seconds behind in ninth place. He was second in class, but his class rival was Mike Moran, who was almost a minute and a half ahead, meaning there was more work to be done. Richard finished 12th here last year, though, so things were already off to a more rapid start this time around. Perhaps at times, a little too rapid. Hot on his heels was Keith McQuillan in another Polaris. Keith was impressing in his first ever Hill Rally appearance, not only inside the top 10 overall, but leading his class by 10 seconds over Jason Rowlands, who was also making his Hill Rally debut. Phil Bayliss was the early class three leader and rounded out the top 10 overall after the morning stages. Running further down the road order meant that he was contending with a particularly slippery and churned up road in places. But with nearly 10 years of hill rally experience under his belt, there was nothing he hadn't had to deal with before. The onboard footage here demonstrates perfectly just how challenging the road conditions were. Jason Rowlands was actually faster than Class 5 leader Keith McQuillan on the opening stage, but dropped half a minute in a troublesome Stage 3, allowing Keith into the class lead. In fact, they were both trailing Stuart Walker going into the third stage, but the Can-Am driver had a disaster on the final stage of the loop, dropping one minute to his class rivals and falling to 12th place, third in class. Well, let's head down to the service area where Anthony is caught up with our leading drivers. Yeah, that's right, Andy, and leading at the minute is Anthony Jackson. Um, Ben's just behind you, a few seconds. Um, tough conditions, low sun, um, going through the trees and then into bright sunlight. Um, first time you've run all terrains as well. Yeah, yeah, we're getting used to the all terrains now. We're a bit, we're a bit nervous at, at the start. I've not run them up here. I've, I've run these in other events, but I haven't run them up here. Um, and we're getting used to it. They've, they've obviously been doing some felling at trees up there, and there's mud on road, which is making it a bit difficult. But everybody's got to contend with it. So yeah, we're really happy. We'll just keep going and try and keep Ben off his back. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll be trying to catch us all day today. So. Have you been uh, pushing it to its limits, or you've been uh, quite conservative? No, we've been trying to just settle in. Like I say, with these tyres, we're not running them up here, and being first car on road and a bit of sweeping and stuff is. Yeah, we just wanted to finish today, and we'll see where we end up. So. Have you got to drive it with the pedal, have you? Definitely, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> a bit nervous over some of them crests, but yeah, we're, we're happy where we are and we'll just keep going. It's a bonus we're in lead, but as long as we finish today, I'll be happy. So. And you got your uh, your team of uh, mechanics uh, looking at your car. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you doing? Just tightening up all the bolts? Yeah, they're just checking if folks come loose. Um, they don't like to sit idle, they're always busy doing something, so um, I think they've found a, a wishbone that's just a little bit loose, but they're just looking for all that might be loose, but I think it's all okay. So. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. 
So currently second, 44 seconds behind Anthony Jackson is uh, Ben Duckworth. Ben, you come back for your vengeance after last year. Um, 44 seconds behind, still 14 stages to go. Plenty yeah, of time to get it back. It's a long event, it's a long way to go. So it's just a case really of making sure the car's reliable, uh, making sure we haven't got any issues at all and just really t taking the stages out one by one. Any issues in the first two stages? No, really good. Um, hit a rock, we've just bent bent the belly plate, a um, couple of little things, but no, nothing serious. That's what it's there for, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> all good. Brilliant. Uh, Matt, how are you finding it? Yeah, it's good. We haven't been out for a, well, a good year, really, have you, properly. It's just getting back into it again. So we've um, just got to keep going and uh, you know, get the teamwork back together. Uh, the uh, adrenaline pumping now. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. The rust is coming off. <laughs> <laughs> and how's that right for yours? Yeah, good, yeah. It's controlling it. It's a trouble. But uh, <laughs> if we can keep it under control and... Uh, Go in the right direction, it'll be it'll come together. Well, I hope so too. Uh, I know you've got to get back out on stage, so I'll let you get on. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Cheers, Cheers. thanks. Cheers, thanks. So the next set of stages is about to get underway. Anthony Jackson's heading the way out. Um, John Drysdale's got his car back together, but he's got a huge leak uh, coming from the radiator. Not too sure what it is. Johnny, do you know what that is yet? I don't know. I think it's the bleeder pipe from the from the top and if I can chisel that back together again I think we should head on back down to um, service and see if we can crimp that or something crack an egg crack. right sorry I'll need to go again Johnny is always busy at the moment uh, but more importantly Paul Rowlands who had a chance of winning the actual Hill Rallies Championship had a big off in stage two so it looks like he's going to have to retire Hello and welcome back to the Scottish Borders Hill Rally and Stage 4 is about to get underway. There's a definite chill in the air though, meaning the marshals are having to take desperate measures to keep themselves warm. Let's head down to Anthony though in the service area where, despite a troublesome morning for some drivers, they're not letting it dampen their spirits. Rob? Yeah. Um, team frantically working on the car, you tighten all the turbo hoses, uh, you've hit something really hard. Um, not going well so far? Ah, it's going well enough, sure. <laughs> uh, ah, it's all right. It was good stage too. Hey. She just slid out on me and I couldn't get her back on the line, but... Ah, well, we'll go again and see how far we get. <laughs> That's all we can do. Uh, do you know what the problem was? Uh, it was a manifold nut slag. Well, it was messing, actually. It fell out and they've got a nut on it and it's, they're tightening up now, so... Thankfully, it's not the turbo. <laughs> Thankfully. Brilliant. And you, what have you hit over there? I was a big, uh, what did we hit, William? Yeah. What was it we hit? It was a big, a big pile you, of logs. Aye. What do you call them? Leave the big pile of logs. So have... <laughs> and it's on your side as well, were you scared? <laughs> no, not too bad. I trust them, I have faith in them, so do you now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, a bit slappy, just straight on the big pile of logs. Nothing we can do about it. So it wasn't, sir. Right, a long way to go now. You've got 15 stages, including a nice stage. Um, hopefully you'll get it back together and uh, crack on. Well, that's dead on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Joining me now is Paul Chambers. Um, out this weekend racing your 100 inch uh, Tomcat 3.9 V8. Um, the story behind this, talk us through it, it's quite interesting. Yeah, the car was largely built off my student loan, which probably shouldn't say on TV actually. Um, so it was built on a budget just to get a chance to go out racing with my dad. Um, so it means that we're having to do a lot of work on it every now and then to keep it going, but uh, it's been great for the last three or four years. It's really low end budget racing. Uh, so you're sleeping in a tent now? Uh, not quite. Luckily he <laughs> has a motorhome I can stay in, so I can scrounge off him. But, but yeah, no, it's good. It's just cheap motorsport, cheap way to get out and, and have a bit of fun with the family and uh, some of the friends that built up in the Northern Ireland four wheel drive club. Yeah, completely standard engine. Um, most of it's pretty standard, standard gearbox, standard diffs. Um, does that make it reliable? Yeah, most of it's land over parts, so if you get the weight out of it and then it's easy to fix and it's all fairly, fairly off the shelf components, it makes it a lot easier as well. Stage four was an exceptionally strong stage for rally leader Anthony Jackson. The stage win is always impressive, but Anthony was incredibly nearly a minute and a half quicker than anybody else through the longest stage of the event so far. To move more than two minutes clear at the front of the field. Such is the length of stage four, it presented a real opportunity for drivers to gain big chunks of time. 
Justin Birchall came into the stage in 19th and finished it in 14th. His Isetsu may not be as quick as the machinery he's driven in the past, but so far it was looking much more reliable, which for someone who has never actually finished the Scottish Hill Rally has to be good news. That being said, he was still pushing on, and the times reflected that. He was now less than a minute away from the top 10. Dale Gilbertson was the man who was rounding out the top 10 after stage 4 and moved into the Class 7 lead after this stage, ahead of Mark McNeil in another Tomcat. Only two seconds separated the pair though, and it was a battle that was to rage throughout the rest of the day. Dale has suffered multiple gearbox failures over recent years, but for now at least, the 4-speed ZF gearbox was holding together well. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Jasmine Philpot, who hasn't made it out into Stage 4 due to gearbox troubles of her own. Anthony caught up with her in the service area. Now, Jasmine, um, first two stages under your belt. Um, you've got a team fantastic working on your car. Yeah. It's not gone quite to plan, has it? No, uh, so we've broken our reverse gear, uh, which means we need a new gearbox. Luckily, we've got a spare one, so um, Gary's just on it doing that now, but we're probably not going to make it out in time, so it's going to cause some problems, but it should be, at least we'll finish, hopefully. Uh, there's a few other people having problems, so it's, it's not over until it's over here. There's still 15 stages to go. Yeah. Um, you've had a fairly successful Yo Yo World Round Club as well, finishing seventh overall. Yeah. Um, what are you expecting here before that? Um, oh God, literally, my only expectation for this is to finish, so um, if I can just, for me it's more like it's ticking a box to say I've done it, so um, if we can just finish, I'll be pleased. Uh, what was the first day like? Um, I enjoyed it, it's quite, um, it's more slippery than I thought it would be because the, the rocks sort of feel like marbles, so you're constantly being just dragged, sort of twitching all the time, but um, it was fine, lots of open tracks, really fast, um, so yeah, really good. George Bryson moved his Kirkland Proto into that incredibly tight Class 7 fight, setting the fastest time in Class on Stage 4 to move into third place. Remarkably, this means that the top three are now separated by just three seconds. Cameron Crowe was bouncing back nicely from that Stage 1 puncture, and his Tomcat was now in 16th place overall and 6th in Class 7. There's no doubt he has the pace to be a part of that podium scrap, but still has time to make up after his early dramas. It's easy to see how punctures can occur though, as more and more loose rocks are exposed as the day goes on. For every rough technical section though, there are plenty of high speed blasts through the forest. The Scottish Borders Hill Rally is a true test of man and machine. Unfortunately it's got the better of some drivers, Anthony caught up with Johnny Drysdale, whose rally was over much earlier than planned. Yeah, Thank you Andy, I'm uh, here with Johnny Drysdale after his uh, mad dash this morning. Um, it's come to an end unfortunately. Hi, the, um, the radiator's put us out in the end, unfortunately, with a little uh, tap on a tree on the front end, and it's just twisted the radiator that little bit, so we've got four cores dripping. We were on the start line up there, we're sitting ready to go, and somebody said there was antifreeze dripping out, so we thought, ah, right, abandoned ship, there's no point. So, which is a shame, because I wanted to get to the bottom of that steering problem, even just for the experimental stage, but <laughs> hey-ho, next time. Mark McNeil had enjoyed a 10-second lead in Class 7 after the morning loop, only managed fourth fastest in stage four, losing him the lead. With such tight margins, no mistakes can be made, but Mark is unlikely to stay down for long. Well, let's head back down into the service park now where Anthony has caught up with the top four. Anthony Jackson leads with Ben Duckworth now over two minutes behind. Well, Anthony, what a blinding fourth stage that was. Pull out a lead of over two minutes now on Ben Duckworth. Yeah, it was a good stage. Um, the car worked well. Um, obviously, it's the second time through, and everybody sweeped it on the, the first run. So we got a good, a good shot at it then. And uh, yeah, the car re really liked it. So we just got in a groove and went with it. It seems to have worked for us. So yeah, yeah it's, it's good that you've got into uh, that rhythm this early on in the hill rally. Yeah, yeah. They, like I say, we've done some work on the suspension and stuff, and these, I've got used to the tyres now. And yeah, it's, it's 
going brilliant. I couldn't ask for anything better. I'd, but I'm not. I just want to finish. <laughs> That's all. So yeah, as long as I finish tonight, I'll be really happy. So. Do you expect it to go this well? No, not all. No, no. It's a, but it's a, there's a long way. And ben will be breathing down my neck and everybody else, and it'll be you know, it's not over till tomorrow, is it? Ben said he was taking it slightly easy this morning because you can't win a hill rally on the first stage, but you can definitely lose one. Um, so now he's, he said he's going to get his finger out. How are you feeling about that? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm expecting that. I'm expecting him to come back strong. So we'll, uh, we'll see what he comes up with and I'll just keep doing my own thing and my own rhythm and we'll see, yeah, well, see where we end up. So I'll be, uh, I'll be awesome. pleased if I'm still in front, but if I'm not, then it's fair enough. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Four stages in, Anthony Jackson is leading. Um, ben, two minutes behind. Yeah. You better put your foot down. Yeah, we're all right with that. There's uh, there's a long way to go. You know, we've at least five more stages today, all of tomorrow. So we're quite comfortable with that. We're not trying to take too many risks. Um, we're trying to keep it uh, sensible. Yeah, this is the name of the game here at Forest Lodge, especially with the night stage coming up. Um, who knows what could happen in uh, in the dark here at, uh, in Scotland. Um, but like you say, um, 16 stages in total, over 100 miles. Um, you've got to conserve the car, conserve the pace. Um, there's still a bit more to give, so it's just finding the right time to do that, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There's, there's a time and a place, and today's not uh, not the time to be taking risks and pushing too hard. Tomorrow, I think if we need to make a bit of time, we can try tomorrow. Um, but uh, at the minute, we're quite comfortable with with where we are. You can't get him, uh, let him get too far away, though. No, agreed. Yeah, we might have to just up the ante a little bit. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Uh, well, it's service time now. Um, Got to have a look at the car, and we'll catch up with you a bit later on. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers, Mark, four stages in. Um, current line third behind Ben Duckworth. Um, still early stages, but you've got to be happy. Uh, yeah, to be fair, I didn't know I was third and team just told me. So, yeah, um, to be fair, the, the last two stages we've done then, it just sort of came together. Adam was pushing me on well. And it, just sort of, it just seemed to flow really and we got through and we did some good time so we were pleased but I didn't realise we were up to third so yeah, just hope we can keep it up for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you've got to stay within touching distance um, because as we get to the close, the closing stages of the uh, the hill rally, anything can happen. So that's well, it. yeah, exactly, that's why it's, it's, you've just got to play a careful, careful game, not go too mad and destroy the car or crash, but again, keep up there and, and keep in the points, you know what I mean? So yeah, fingers crossed we'll get we'll get to the end and, and uh, hopefully have a really good result. Hopefully, we'll keep an eye on it and good luck. All right, cheers guys, thank you. Well Ian, four stages in. Um, your closest rival in the uh, championship is retired unfortunately, so unfortunately, you could have yes. a title on your hand. Um, yes, maybe. Uh, we'll have to finish yet to, to see how we get on, but the courses are quite arduous out there today. A um, lot of bomb holes. Um, yes, interesting and some low sum which is causing a few interesting moments, shall we say, on the corners. Uh, but yes, we'll see how the championship pans out. Uh, and, uh, how's the car performing? Um, you concerned about the belts you said earlier on? Yes, we. Um, the system that we have in this car for belts works absolutely fine, but we forgot about one thing, we forgot about the borders and the big bomb holes. So the water's coming up over the roof and down uh, and through our pipework into the belts. Like the last stage there, after the first, the third stage, this last stage we've obviously taken water in again, so I was nursing the car out. But we're going to do some modifications now to stop that and hopefully get the pedal down again. Really, Ned. With the water going in, does it make this belt slip? What, what yes, happens? it's uh, what, basically once the belts get wet, they start slipping, and uh, obviously that creates heat. So it's a balance just to stop. They will eventually dry out, but the problem is on a Whenever you're in that stage and trying to get around it in a hurry, you they're not drying out fast enough for you, so it's a bit of a balancing act. Yeah, we're getting there. Once you go through one puddle, there's another one around there's the corner. There's another one around the corner, that's right. And uh, So we're going to take the pipework out of where it is at the minute to, to enable us to keep the belts dry. It's, it's been working fine up until today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, good luck. Hopefully we'll see you at the end and potentially a championship. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully we'll see you at the end. Good luck. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the 2018 Scottish Borders Hill Rally where the midfield runners are lining up to tackle stage four against the spectacular backdrop of the Scottish scenery. Much of the attention today has been on the Titanic Class 7 scrap. David Brose gained two places to move into 14th overall but wasn't enough to improve on fifth in Class 7 just yet. 
14th is still one position better than he managed on his first appearance at this event 12 months ago, and it's good to see his pace improving. Alistair Morton gained one position in Stage 4 to move provisionally onto the Class 5 podium. That puts him into 17th place overall, but nearly two minutes behind Jason Rowlands, his next Class 5 target. Alistair is the current SCCC champion though, so well worth keeping an eye on throughout the rest of the event. Stuart Walker had been third in Class 5 after the morning stages, but lost two positions to both Morton and Jason Noakes after a troubled run through Stage 4, which saw him setting the slowest time of all the Class 5 runners. Meanwhile, in Class 1, there was a great battle developing between Steve Carroll and Michael Wilson, both of whom caught up with Anthony. Michael Wilson, uh, four stages done here at the Forest Estates. Um, how's the freelander coping? Coping very well, yeah, it's good, it's good. I noticed that it's uh, slightly taller than it used to be, talk us through it. Yeah, um, we used to run it standard height for the Freelander Challenge, but these are a little bit longer, a little bit rougher, so we lifted it 40 mil, but it does suffer a bit on the handling. So it's you make a better Steve Carroll in the other Freelander, um, 50 seconds ahead of you, but it's nothing uh, when, you, when you're talking about Forest Estate. No, it's not a long way, I mean we've passed so many people with punches and, and have been off, so um, 50 seconds of, you know, a minute, it's nothing really. How, what's your mindset? Are you uh, driving conservative or have you got your foot fl flat down? No, well, I'll say the st stage two was cancelled, so we missed that with the 12 milers, so we've just done that now with stage four again. Uh, no, we're just, we're just learning it really. I mean, obviously, they get repeated, so we get a bit quicker as we go on. We just spoke to Mike Wilson, who uh, said his main rival is Steve Carroll. Yeah. Now, Steve, um, not going too well for yourself, though, is it? No, no, first time in six years, the old girl's uh, letting us down a little bit. I've just had a look at it, she's got a broken piston. Uh, blowing a lot of oil out, she's not overheating, she's still revving, got a little bit of lack of power, so we're just going to keep her going, we'll keep her trying, if she stops, she stops, if she keeps going, well that's the name of the game isn't it, that's more to sport. Well it doesn't look as though Steve is the only one running into difficulties, this was Andy Powell earlier on this morning, arriving at the end of a stage, clearly in some trouble, he's trying to get the car fired up, let's listen in and see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, unfortunately, this is looking fairly terminal. Let's head down into the service park with Anthony and see if he can give us some more news on the situation. So, another potential retirement here at Forest Estates. The Cosworth powered Peugeot 306 of Andy Powell. The injectors aren't putting any fuel into the ports, so you've got no power. You need fuel to run an engine. Um, they're trying to fix it, they think it's the uh, cam sensor, so he's running, he's run off, he's trying to find a Ford Durotech engine so he can nick that uh, sensor and try and get it back running, but right in the middle of nowhere, so he's going to be lucky. Let's, uh, we'll keep an eye on it and uh, catch up with him a bit later, see how he's going on, but for now, if we turn around, stage five is about to get underway, Anthony Jackson on the start line, um, followed by Willie Stubbs, Ben Duckworth should be uh, right behind him, um, which he is, as you can see. Look how 21 on a trailer is trying to go home. Well, first on the road and with no intention of going home is rally leader and reigning champion of the event, Anthony Jackson. And he's proving very difficult to stop. A stage win on stage five, followed by an even more emphatic one on stage six, means that he has pulled out what could prove to be an unassailable lead. Let's ride on board with the number one car and witness firsthand just how quickly he's going. Fantastic stuff there from the onboard camera. Anthony and his co-driver Pete Widop are going to be hard to catch. Now, second on the road should have been Ben Duckworth. We saw him making his way towards the start line just now, but in actual fact, it's Mark Jakes who has appeared next. Mark had been sat fairly comfortably in third place, but if Duckworth has run into trouble, that could see Jakes become Anthony Jackson's nearest rival. 
Mark has often taken a cautious approach in the past, but with a possible chance of victory now appearing, this could be when he starts to turn up the aggression. The Lofthouse LS3, though, is not particularly well suited to some of the tighter stages on the event, so he could have his work cut out. Still no sign of Ben Duckworth, and so after six stages, it's now Ian Gregg who moves into third place. With two second place stage times this afternoon, Ian has actually started to apply some real pressure to Mark Jakes for second. He's now just 16 seconds behind. Well, let's see whether Anthony can shed any light on what has happened to our erstwhile second place runners. So, the end of stage six here at uh, Forest Estate. Ben Duckworth, you said you uh, wanted to push it a bit more, you needed to uh, get that gap back on Anthony. However, the engine's gone. Yeah, unfortunately we uh, had the engine go, so that's it, end of rally. Such a shame, I thought you were going to come back with a vengeance uh, and say, say the win. You didn't see this one coming, did you? No, I didn't, and um, we've never had NG, any engine problems at all. Um, we've always you know, been reliable on that front, so uh, unfortunately that's caught us out, but you know, we felt we were going well and we were driving smooth and we sort of felt really, really it's come together, wasn't it? Yeah, it was coming together. Coming together yeah. yeah, but unfortunately, that's motorsport. Back to the on-stage action now and a change of position in class five. Jason Noakes' number 32 Polaris had been running fourth in class, but two disappointing stages in the afternoon saw him drop to fifth and now over one minute behind Stuart Walker, who benefited to move up one position. This is Jason's first ever hill rally though, so the whole event is one big learning experience. However much Noakes is struggling though, he's still having a better day than Dean Sutcliffe, who is in the unenviable position of running last in the standings towards the end of day number one. He caught up with Anthony. It's just one of the things, putting a big stomping way, it's coming out corner blind and it's there and I thought, oh, I just slid for it and it's like, I'm either going to get stuck or go over it, anyway, hit it. And I just thought, when in doubt, plant it. And that's what I did, just planted it, jumped over at the top. Rob jumped out, had a look. He says, you got, you got a flat tyre? I says, right, well, we better go a bit quicker then, haven't we? <laughs> but it runs out. But this is this has just been pop, 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 pop. What's this you, you're tinkering with now? Fuel pump, one of two. Um, it needs, need, needs to, or else it just, um, well, it just doesn't have enough fuel. And we've been getting fuel starvation. So yeah, it's just been one of them days. Gary Sanders Pepit had a solid opening day, which saw him gain two positions in the afternoon loop, moving his Land Rover into the top 20 overall and seventh in class. Gary is one of the most experienced competitors in the field, and that experience is paying dividends. As others fall by the wayside, he and his co-driver Ian Miller continue to climb the leaderboard. Gary's nearest rival at this stage is Limfell Owen in his Land Rover Defender, and the pair are just eight seconds apart after six stages. Running with a standard engine and gearbox with only minor alterations to the brakes and suspension, this is a great example of the simple joys of cross-country competition without an astronomical budget required. Limfell also has some circuit racing experience, but has been competing on hill rallies for many years and has learnt the importance of looking after the car on these gruelling events. Mike Moran was a contender for an outright podium earlier on, but ran into difficulties on stage four, meaning he spent the rest of the afternoon languishing down the order. He's been setting some of the fastest times of the day though, as he starts his long climb back up the order. Let's take a moment to ride on board with the 2011 Scottish Hill Rally champ.
Robert Patton has had an eventful day, and his battle scarred defender will have a few tales to tell at the end of the rally. He dropped out of the top 20 in the afternoon stages, but he's still second in class and will no doubt still have a smile on his face. The leading Class 11 contender is Barry Marshall, after early leader John Rennie dropped out of the event mid-morning, leaving Barry as the only remaining competitor in the class. Nonetheless, he's driven a safe and sensible rally so far, with the Land Rover sporting not the slightest bit of damage and negotiating the terrain well. On board now with Michael Wilson in his completely standard Land Rover Freelander. Michael rounded out the afternoon leading Class 1 by over a minute, despite having to negotiate the of traffic on stage. Sean Rogers was second in Class 1 and would stay there for the remainder of the day. Mitsubishi wasn't quite able to keep up with Wilson, but continued steadily with no major issues. So as the competitors head into the night stages, it's all going Anthony Jackson's way so far. Join us after the break to see if he can hold on through the final day. Welcome back to the Scottish Borders Hill Rally where Anthony Jackson has survived the night stages intact and with a massive seven and three quarter minute lead over Mark Jakes in second and Ian Gregg third. Ian is only one second though ahead of Willie Stubbs in fourth, with Paul Myers rounding out the top five. Dale Gilbertson down in seventh meanwhile is at the head of that great class seven battle. Let's join Anthony now on a cold Sunday morning. Nice stages are done, first thing Sunday morning. Six stages to go Anthony, you were running away with this. What a performance yesterday, seven minutes ahead. What's the plan here? Yeah, we're just going to see what the roads are like out there this morning and just keep it in that rhythm. Hopefully we've still got it from yesterday and see how we get on. Hopefully we'll finish and see what happens. It's all coming together for you this year, as it did last year. It's different circumstances this year, but uh, you've shown your, your, your true talent here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, we, we try. We just we come and turn up and we have a go and keep changing bits on car and I keep learning stuff and yeah it's just like you say it's all just come together today we've just got a nice rhythm this weekend and it's yeah brilliant. Are you riding the prize or are you just taking it stage oh, by stage? No. Stage by stage no <laughs> <laughs> it's not over till the fat lady sings. 15 minutes to stage one here on Sunday morning it's a cold morning the sun's shining low sun Willie Stubbs you're a second behind Ian Gregg in fourth place still in with a chance Anthony's out there seven minutes ahead what can you do today? We're just going to carry on what we were doing yesterday because um, everything's different to last year. We've got a different co-driver, David here, who's never never done it before. I've changed the gearbox on the car uh, to a sequential PPG um, and we're having to run all-terrain tyres, which I'm, I've never driven on before, let alone raced on. So it's all a bit different. We've had a couple of punctures yesterday on the eight-mile stage early early into it, so I've had to, lost a lot of time there. Um, a couple of backups through uh, driver error um, and but other than that we're in it and there's all to play for isn't it to go onto the podium if we if we can keep it between the trees. Mark uh, about to start uh, day two here at Forest Lodge currently lying in second place what a performance you've got to be happy. Well yeah we uh, had a good day in the end yesterday car went really well uh, service crew did really well so yeah just just to try and do a repeat today and just keep ahead of um, I think it's Simon Adam, uh, si um, Greg, Greg, Ian Greg in the in the buggy and just try and see if we can get some, uh, take a bit of time out of uh, Anthony. So yeah, fingers crossed it'll go okay. It's a tall order trying to catch Anthony. Um, you're only 20 seconds ahead of Ian Greg, so you've got to be uh, conscious of that as well. It's going to be a bit of a scrap, yeah. Yeah, can't <laughs> wait to see how it unfolds. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, yeah. guys. Ian, um, you're about to get the last six stages underway. You're one second behind Mark Jakes. Um, a fairly decent run in the uh, in the night stages. Um, how are you feeling this morning? Looking forward to it. Um, nice morning, crisp, and uh, yes, we're uh, absolutely and totally looking forward to getting uh, the next six stages under our belt. All been well, and uh, getting over the finish line. Yeah. So we'll have to uh, see 
how Mark gets on uh, in his current placing and uh, see if we can catch him. You can only do what you can do, can't you? You've just got to keep your head straight and just get to the end now. That's exactly it, yeah. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> Don't know about how fit we are. <laughs> Good stuff, right. Well, uh, good luck. Um, hopefully we'll see you at the end. I'll see you soon. Before we check in with our leaders on the final day, a quick mention for a few notable drivers a bit further down the order. The number 35 Land Rover is being driven by Richard Haywood, who is the MD of Bowler, and Anthony had a chance to chat with him on the final morning. Now, the Managing Director of Bowler is here, Richard Haywood. Richard, um, you having fun? Yeah, we're having a wonderful time. We um, so far haven't fallen over, thank goodness, so we're uh, still going well. Both cars are running um, with the other guild team as well, so we're out here to enjoy ourselves. Back please, uh, Kenny. <laughs> fantastic looking machines and what a fantastic place to be. The scenery is absolutely stunning this weekend. The weather's uh, beautiful. A bit of ice out there, are you concerned? Well, uh, it makes it interesting, shall we say. <laughs> you know, you, uh, you've you got to get a lap round. We're going to be careful. We're not going to do anything silly, so hopefully we'll get through. But um, you never know with ice, do you? It depends on... The how big the ice is. There may, <laughs> there may be a patch up there that's just too big for us, but uh, I hope not. Chloe Anna Jones is one of several female competitors in the event this year, and she improved massively on the final day. She ended day one in 28th position and climbed up six positions to 22nd over the final six stages. No mean feat, given how spread out the order was by this late stage. Not bad for someone in only their second ever hill rally. Also in her second hill rally was Holly Wicklow, who came home third in class two. The standard production Land Rover Defender gained two positions over the final day to finish 25th overall. It was a safe and steady run as she gained further experience, but she got to the finish unscathed, unlike many of her more experienced fellow competitors. One driver we didn't see as much of at the sharp end as we expected was Rob Bull. He has acquired Mike Moran's two-time British Cross Country Championship winning car, but failed to finish the very first stage of the rally. He set several top ten stage times throughout the rest of the event, including a fifth fastest time on the final stage, his best of the rally. Unfortunately, there are some drivers who dropped out over the final day, including John Pickering, who's with Anthony. John Pickering in his trusty Land Rover Discovery V8. Not so trusty anymore. No. Um, he retired before the nice stage. You thought it was best to uh, retire the car rather than get stuck out in the uh, in the darkness of Forest Estate. Um, what's happened? Talk us through it. Ba basically, we started to get a noise on take up, which was a, a loud crunch. And it turns out it was the rubber donut that's on the prop shaft. We checked it after running into service, and then it wasn't too bad. We thought we could carry on. Checked it again after the next three stages and it deteriorated to such a point where it was going to be dangerous to carry on or we were going to get stuck in the dark in Scotland. And you don't know what the ghouly men are out in in Scotland that they're damn nice. <laughs> so we decided that rather than carry on and risk extra damage, we'd uh, pull the plug on it. The attrition rate continues, uh, just in virtual, like last year. Day two, and it's all over. Yeah, I'm, it's cursed me again. <laughs> Ten years curse on this place. So, yeah, bloody just running up to, uh, to the first stage of the morning. Clutch pedal just disappeared. I'm done. So, I'm just like, <laughs> again, another year. So, And apart from all the safety features, a pretty standard car. You weren't running too badly, uh, eighth overall. Yeah, it's, it, it is a standard car. We had to put the ECU back to uh, standard because the, the mapping that was in there was just absolutely totally wrong. So the, the guy over the, uh, the, the week just running up to it, he said, all I can do is put it back to standard. So we had 163 brake, which is standard settings. So yeah, to, totally standard car. Apart from a roll cage and fire extinguisher and uh, 
Yeah, run it, running at eight. Phil, currently lying fifth. Uh, you didn't see that coming, did you? Uh, no, pretty good weekend so far. Um, yeah, I don't know how we've ended up here, really, but it is good. There's a big scrap in front of you, so uh, anything can happen on these last three stages. It could possibly. We're just going to back off a bit. We've got too much to gain and we've got a bit of a buffer behind, so we'll try and take it steadier just to conserve the motor and we'll see if anyone else messes it up. Yeah. The gods may be kind to you today. Yeah, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, hopefully we'll see you at the end. Alright, see you mate. Cheers. And finally, we're here. The final stage and a commanding victory for Anthony Jackson, who wins by an astonishing 9 minutes and 19 seconds. Willie Stubbs moves into second on the final stage, having started the day in fourth. Mark Jakes rounds out the podium ahead of Ian Gregg, who wins the Hill Rally Championship in fourth. Phil Bailey is fifth and wins Class 3, while Dale Gilbertson extended his lead on the final day to win the ultra-competitive Class 7. Jason Rowlands is in the top 10 and takes victory in Class 5, with Limpel Owen winning Class 2, and Class 8 going to Richard Wynne Williams. Here's a full list of the class winners. Once again, no matter where you were in the overall classification, there is always something to fight for. Well, Anthony, 16 stages. We can confirm you are the winner of the 2018 Scottish Border Hill Rally. How are you feeling? Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, can't, can't believe it. Two in a row. It's uh, it's unreal. We, we just came this weekend. It was a last minute thing. Peter sponsored me, Discovery Centre, and we were like, you need to go and have a go. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know. And he's like, and he got me drunk one night, put entry in, <laughs> and here we are. And ah, never thought we'd win it. Never, never in a million years. Willie Stubbs, you said before the last three stages, you're going to go hell for leather. You've done just that. And second place is your reward. Well done. Thank you very much second again as last year um, come to do it about service lads and David new co-driver he's done really good we, we pushed on really well and got on had a good flow through the last stage and uh, we've just done enough to get in front of Mark uh, so I think we, we've done all right we've we've done six hill rallies with this car now and completed every one and I think we've been on the podium and this will be the fourth time out of six Mark you you said you're gonna take it conservative going into the last three rounds but Willie Stubbs said he's gonna go hell for leather in the end you switch places but third place isn't a bad result no to be fair we i was really hoping we could manage to get second but i think willie pipped us to the post by about 13 seconds so but at least i mean third is still a good result here i mean even just to finish you know the car's been impeccable all weekend you know it's just everything's gone really well it's just a shame we uh, on that last stage then he took quite a bit of time out of us he said he was going for it and we were we were at it but he just he, he just he beat us. <laughs> so following on from a second place at the Welsh Hill Rally at Walter Arena, Ian Gregg finishing fourth here at Forest Estate, clinches the Hill Rally title. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, an arduous event uh, this weekend, but a bit of a surprise for us, but we thoroughly enjoyed it. What a beautiful scenery. Um, uh, you wouldn't think we have time to admire it, but yeah, in the liaisons <laughs> we were admiring it. But it was a tough fought event. Uh, congratulations to Anthony for winning it second time. He drove like a star. Um, so. Yes, all to play for for Anthony next year, but yeah, we're very pleased to win the Hell Rally Championship with the Polaris RZR.